My name is Luke Anderson, also known as Microbial Luke. Today, we're going to be looking into my water fountain. Now, remember, always follow basic safety protocols. Safety glasses, closed-toed shoes, turkey baser in lower pocket, and wear your gloves. Now, let's go look inside of... Oh, that's backwards. All right, <laughs> let's go look inside of my water fountain. As you can see here, we have arrived at the water fountain. Now, we're going to take our highly scientific accumulation device. And we're gonna go ahead and get a sample from the water. Let's take a sample right here. Yes, I think we have some good organisms in here to look at. Let's go. Do, 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 do. We have arrived at our highly scientific, top secret, NASA funded laboratory. As you can see here, I have my sample. I have microscope slide equipment. And I have my highly scientific transferring device. What we're gonna do is take a new microscope slide, making sure to only touch it on the edges, to not scuff up the center. We're gonna put it on our lab station, which is also provided by NASA, and it's highly scientifically advanced. And we're going to open the cover glass case to prepare. We're going to take our sample, and using our transferring device, take a bit of the water. Now remember, you only need a little bit of water to have a good slide. I'm going to come over here. And we're going to go right there. And that's okay if you don't hit the center. Now I'm going to use this napkin to dab up a little bit of extra water over here. Once that's gone, I'm going to take a cover slip, connect it at a 45 degree angle with the water. Once it connects, I'm going to drop it. And now we have a masterfully, internationally resounded, created slide. Let's head over to the microscope. Now that we've arrived at our microscope station, we're going to sit down, position ourselves, turn on the microscope, the microscope light. Now we're going to put the slide that we prepared onto the platform and slide it all the way forward. Always follow the low to high rule. I'm starting at 10x because I'm not lame and use those lame objectives like 4x. Now I'm going to center whatever I want to look at and try to see if I could find it in the microscope. Oh, wow. All right, it looks like we found something. Oh yeah, if you look there, you can see that we found what looks to me like, it looks like a, a mosquito larva. Let's go ahead and focus it more. It's out of focus. Oh, there we go. And it seems like, I don't know what it, what it is, but maybe it's like heart is beating or something like that. I see fluids inside of it moving in a beating-like fashion, in a rhythm, like lub-dub. All right, well, let's go up to 40x to see if we can get a better look. We have to refocus it. Gonna adjust the light a bit. Now we can position what we want to look at. Uh huh. Very interesting. Now, while you look at this, let me talk about mosquitoes and mosquito larvae. I'll also put up these other slides that I prepared so you can look at them as well. Let's go. What you're looking at right now is a mosquito that has exploded. This is most likely because the cover slip that was put onto the glass slide had a lot of pressure which ended up squishing the mosquito and causing the various things inside of it to spill out. Mosquitoes prefer warmer and more humid climates, which is why we find them so much in California where it is warm and summer is just beginning. 
Although there are more than 3,500 species of mosquitoes, they all have one thing in common, and that is they need water. This has to do with the first stage of the mosquito life cycle, which is the egg. All mosquito eggs require some form of water to hatch. After exposure to water, most eggs hatch within one to three days. Once eggs hatch, larvae emerge. These larvae are mostly referred to as wrigglers, as they can be seen wriggling their body in the water. We are looking at larvae right now. After seven to 10 days as larvae, they reach the pupil stage. During the pupil stage, they spend most of their time at the surface of the water, taking in air. After one to three days in the pupil stage, an adult mosquito emerges. Mosquito breeding takes place a little bit after a day, once the adult emerges. If a mosquito female has mated once, she can lay eggs for the rest of her life. Adult male mosquitoes do not take blood meals, and they live about a week or two, surviving on the nectar of plants. Female mosquitoes can live over a month, and they're the ones humans generally dislike, because they do feed on blood, which is a common vector for disease. Mosquitoes are very interesting because medically, there have been no positive aspects found with them. They generally have negative impacts on humans due to diseases they carry. However, I recently read in a book that a mosquito or a group of mosquitoes has been genetically modified to carry a form of Wolbachia that makes it so the mosquito cannot carry malaria. And through competitive inhibition, this mosquito that can't carry malaria takes over the area or the niche of the mosquito that can carry malaria, thus helping humans lower the risk of catching malaria. We've learned a lot today. We've learned that mosquitoes are aquatic breeding animals or organisms. We've also learned that they look kind of freaky under the microscope. We've also learned that Microbial Luke is the best YouTube channel scientist around. Now, I'm Luke Anderson. Please remember to subscribe and like the video and share it because I am microbially yours.